Howdy everybody, it's Johnny F, WJ0NF, and I want to take a moment to talk about uh, some what you would need to do to your home network to support setting up an Arden node that you want to put a tunnel server on. So we're on my uh, router interface right here, and the, the first thing that you need to do in order to get a tunnel set up is to do a tunnel server, I should say. Because a, a ton, if you're just setting up a tunnel client, you don't need to do any of this stuff. You just set up your tunnel client in your node, um, and it's fairly straightforward. And there's other videos on how to set that up. But we're specifically talking about setting up a tunnel server on your home network and the main thing that you're going to need to do with your home router is set up port forwarding you can see here I've got a rule a uh, port forwarding rule and and again this is the way my my uh, router works it's you know your router may be different maybe slightly different naming and so on but it is port forwarding and in this case you can see I labeled it an Arden tunnel and my destination device what is uh, I, this Microtech HAP unit it's pulling that name automatically from the device this is the device's current IP address and what you want to do is you want to port forward um, port 5525 and both TCP and UDP protocols. So uh, you would just create create a rule. I gave it whatever name I wanted. I selected the device in this case from my list, but you may have to type that IP address in yourself. Uh, the IP the internal IP address, the private IP address, and then you put the the port. That you want to cover um, a lot of times you can if you need to cover more than one port as you can see from the note there it shows that you can put a dash so you could do like port 5525-5526 to cover both ports if you needed to do that so i set that for both public and private ports and then i picked tcp and udp so i'm covering both protocols and then I created that. So that's going to tell my router that if any traffic comes to my router for port 5525 to forward it to this IP address, uh, for which is the current IP address of my, my Microtech HAP. Now, normally what your firewall would say was, I didn't request this information on port 5525 and it would just discard it it would just drop it it wouldn't answer it it wouldn't do anything it would just drop it um, but in this case it's saying if you do see that traffic send it over to the device on this IP address so that is setting up the port forward to allow somebody else's tunnel client to come through your firewall or your router and and push that that data that request over to your HAP unit where you have the tunnel server set up but one thing that it would be, is going to be very helpful for you is that this IP address can change if you reboot your router and or reboot your your tunnel server device in this case my Microtech HAP this IP could change and if that IP changes then this port forward no longer works so what you want to do if your router will support it is you want to set up a DHCP reservation now uh, the DHCP server on my network is handing out IP addresses in this case from 20 through 200 now I could set a static IP on my my uh, Microtech HAP node and I could use an IP address that was below this number or above this number but it's probably easier 
just to go in and do a reservation. And in my case, if I go to DHCP clients, it shows me all of the stuff that's on my network that has an IP address. And every device that has a network connection, wired or wireless, will have a MAC address, which is a unique identifier. This address is unique to that device and no other device should have that same address. So what happens is uh, it sees you plug in your device, it gets the MAC address, it can usually pull the name of the device by asking the device and then it assigns it an IP address. But again, if that IP address ever changes, or if you reboot that device or reboot your router, that IP could change. That's why it's DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, I think. Um, so in my case, if I wanted, like this is my MacBook Pro here, if I clicked on that, I could say add an address reservation. And it does that. And if I look at my reservations now, you'll see one for that MacBook Pro. What that tells my router is, is that anytime you see this device make a connection to the system, and, and by device, it's looking for this specific MAC address, not for this name. It's looking for this unique identifier. If it sees this unique identifier, it gives it this address, this 104 address, every time doesn't matter what's rebooted, it doesn't matter uh, which device is power cycled, it will always get this IP address. So that of course, excuse me, What? but if you're looking here, you'll see here's that HAP unit, it's on 123 and there's its MAC address. So now what that means is no matter whether I power cycle that HAP or whatever, my port forwarding is, is always gonna send 5525 to this 123 address, always. And without that reservation, that 123 address may change. But now, because I've reserved that IP address just for this device, that will never change. So I should never have to go back in and change this port forwarding to a different IP address because it uh, because the device got rebooted or the router got rebooted. So the, the, you have to set up this tunnel no matter what to make your tunnel server work. It has to allow this traffic in and this forward is the only way to allow incoming traffic. Otherwise your router will ignore it and throw it away. Uh, so if you can do, if your device will allow you to go and do a reservation, and as you saw, mine, I can do a reservation from inside the client. Some devices aren't that way. You'd have to go into the reservation section and actually type in some information. But in this case, I can go to client. I can say, pick the device, say add a reservation. It shows up here. Now my port forward is in place. And now I have locked in that IP address so that never changes. So like I said, you have to do the port forward. You don't have to do the reservation. But if things get rebooted, your tunnels could all of a sudden go down. And if you haven't messed with it for a year, you might not remember that, you know, that this IP address could have changed. And, you know, you'll bang your head on the desk for a little bit. So those are the two things I recommend. And once you have those two set up, then your tunnels should stay up and it should stay stable no matter what gets rebooted or when you get a power outage or anything like that. Hope this was helpful to you. 73.